the radio has made it desirable to make some announcements that we didn't choose to make when everybody could see and hear who came into the building. But not only is this building now filled to capacity, but there are thousands of people who are listening in on the outside. And many are witnessing what you witnessed this morning by television in different parts of the country. Don't we live in a wonderful age? I wonder if we appreciate what it is to live today with all the advantages of nearly 6,000 years since our first parents came into the world. And here we are in the tops of these everlasting hills. People in this building today that was erected when the people were very poor and in distress. The building itself is yet unsurpassed in all the world as a house of worship and a place in which one's voice may be heard by so many people. During the last few weeks, we've had a good many visitors here. Some of them of national prominence and some of international prominence. They've come into this structure that our forebears prepared and they've looked around and they have said, this is different from anything I have seen. Some of them have remarked, there's an influence here that is different. And so there should be. This house is the Lord's house. It was dedicated to him by the people after they had struggled to prepare it. It was presented to him after it had been fully paid for. And since that time, all people who have come into this house have come here as the guests of our Heavenly Father. I say all people. Sometimes I have had people interrogate me in regard to what People not members of the church be permitted to come here? I've been pleased to answer them. All of our father's children are welcome in his house. And so today where he met not just as a matter of curiosity. We haven't met just because it's customary. I hope we have come here with a spirit of worship with a desire that whatever may be said here may be inspired by our Heavenly Father. Our sisters have sung beautifully for us this morning. The great organ has been their accompaniment. And we who have come to worship may now think seriously of the purpose of life because this world is in a pitiable condition. Notwithstanding the fact that our Heavenly Father down through the ages has been counseling and advising his children through men that he raised up for that purpose, prophets of God, yet there has been controversy even in the days of the Savior, among his own associates, there was controversy. People have been suspicious of one another. They haven't believed what they have heard. And they haven't been, been willing to do like one who, talking to Philip one day, one of the disciples of the Savior, and Philip said, the Lord has come. And he described him. And the man standing by 
said, where did he come from? And Philip said, well, he came from Nazareth. And then the good man said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? He had been taught to believe that no good could come from Nazareth. And yet, he was the man who later the Savior referred to as an Israel, Israelite without guile. A good man, but deceived because of the story that he'd heard. But when he once learned, when he accepted the invitation, when the disciples said, come and see, he came to see. And so it is with us. All our father's children are welcome here. We've had great joy under the influence of his spirit. We'd like everybody to enjoy that blessing. And so when they have asked, what kind of people are these here? Our answer has been, come and see. And so this morning we are here as children of our Heavenly Father, everyone, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and others, all children of our Heavenly Father, all welcome to his house, all guests of the, of the Lord. And we ought to have a good time. Just think of our privileges and our blessings. Think down through the ages of the multitude of wars and destruction that have wiped people out in many parts of the world and nations have been entirely obliterated. And yet, for some reason or another, there are many good people who, like Nathaniel, cannot believe the truth. One has said of the people of the world, they'd rather believe a lie and be damned than accept the truth. That's rather a severe statement, but I think perhaps it will bear receiving as a fact. There isn't anything in the world that is more deleterious or harmful of the human family than hatred, suspicion, and the attitude that some people have toward their fellows of unkindness. The spirit of the adversary is the spirit of destruction. There are two influences in the world. The one is the influence of our Heavenly Father, and the other is the influence of Satan. We can take our choice which territory we want to live in, in the territory of Satan or the territory of our Heavenly Father. I've many times repeated what my grandfather said, who at one time talked also from this stand, and he had, he's the man who gave me his name. And in talking to his family, he said, there's a line of demarcation well defined. On one side of the line is the Lord's territory. On the other side of the line is the devil's territory. And he said, if you will stay on the Lord's side of the line, you're perfectly safe. Because the adversary of all righteousness cannot cross that line. What does that mean? It means to me that those who are living righteous lives, keeping all of the commandments of our Heavenly Father, are perfectly safe. But those who trifle with his advice and counsel, when we think of the Ten Commandments that were given by Moses, just as, if it, just as necessary for us to observe today as they were by Israel when they were given by Moses in the wilderness. If the people of this world were keeping the Ten Commandments, honoring them, there would be no war, there would be no sorrows and distresses such as afflict mankind. But because there are so many who cannot put themselves in a frame of mind to live righteous lives, 
They're in confusion and they're in distress. Now this building, as I say, was dedicated to the Lord. Some people have criticized in their mind that it has been open to other faiths, to other churches, to people with other beliefs who have had a message as they felt for us. I'm sure that if you had gone in the days of Jesus of Nazareth and followed him as many people did through the fields and through the country, you would have found many of them. The majority of them were not believers in his mission until they were touched by his spirit and then they became believers. They were welcome. And so I say all our father's children are welcome here and we hope that when they come, they'll come with a receptive mind and with a prayer in their hearts such as was offered this morning by our brother from Canada. Well now, my brothers and sisters, it does seem that we're living in a sick world. And the wise wisdom of the wise. So we read in the scriptures that it was a kind of to come a time that the wisdom of the wise should perish and the understanding of their prudent men should be hid. And that is the condition of the world today. The leaders of nations, many of them desire to do the thing that will benefit their nation or the group they belong to. But selfishness in many cases characterizes their conduct and the result is instead of peace, we have sorrow and distress. Now there's only one way. We can legislate until doomsday but that will not make men righteous. It will be necessary for people who are in the dark to repent of their sins, correct their lives, and live in such a righteous way that they can go before our Heavenly Father. Think of the beautiful prayer that was offered by Jesus of Nazareth, who gave his life a man who represented a great race of people that was despised by other races. And when he came into the world, he came to bring a blessing. And when he was asked, how shall we pray? Teach us to pray. And what a beautiful, simple prayer he gave. Anybody could repeat it. And if they repeated it with their hearts in tune with a Spirit of the Lord, feel the influence that comes from it. It wasn't there very long after that until he was cruelly murdered, as have been the prophets of God from the beginning, almost from the beginning, I'll put it. But the fact remains that all this time our Heavenly Father has had upon the earth men and women who are righteous, who are seeking to do his will and keep his commandments. Many of you here today are the, either from foreign lands or the descendants of those who came from foreign lands. Many of you or your forebears have heard the gospel of, as it has been taught by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints during the last uh, little over a hundred years. Sometimes heard it on the street where there was a humble missionary teaching what the Lord had called him to teach. There was something that touched the hearts of those who heard. I've had my experiences in the mission field. I've seen groups of people stand and listen to a humble missionary explain the purpose of life and talk to the people and encourage them to repent of their sins. And I have sometimes heard people say, I have never before felt an influence like I feel while I hear that man talk. 
Well, now we're here this morning. There'll be a number of people to talk to us. I mustn't take too much of your time, but I want to take this occasion to express my appreciation for the opportunity of being here, the privilege of associating with such men and women as are here this morning. Grateful for the privilege that came to me of being reared in this part of the world under a government that God himself said was prepared by men that he raised up for that very purpose. I speak of the Constitution of the United States. I'm grateful for my blessings, all of them. And thank you, my brothers and sisters, who from day to day and from year to year as I've gone through life have encouraged me to go on and represent as as I might the desires of our Heavenly Father in my own life that I might receive my blessing. There is a law irrevocably decreed in heaven from before the foundation of this world upon which every blessing is predicated. And unless we observe that law, we cannot enjoy the blessing. The Lord has told us that. Well now, if people disagree with us, if our fathers other children don't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ as revealed in this latter day to the prophet Joseph Smith, that ought not to incur our displeasure. It ought to enlist our sympathy. Because if we know as Philip knew when he testified of the man who came from Nazareth. He was sure he could invite his friend to come and see. If we're just as sure as that, day by day, we will let our light so shine that others, seeing our good works, will be constrained to glorify our Father in heaven. Well, now, I don't want to be boastful, I've traveled a good deal in the world, approximately a million miles, advocating the gospel of Jesus Christ as revealed in this latter day. And I've found good people everywhere, wonderful people, kind and friendly, but until they received an understanding of the truth and the informed their lives to the teachings of our Heavenly Father. They weren't taking advantage of all their opportunities. And when that time came and they accepted the truth, they had just that much added to what they possessed before. So when we go into the world and talk to our father's other children, we don't ask them to give up any truth that they have. We don't ask them to surrender what they have believed if it's true, retain it all. And at the present time, we have approximately 5,000 missionaries in the world who are saying to our fathers, other children, come and see. They're saying to our fathers, other children, keep all the good that you have and let us sit down with you and add to what you already possess for your own happiness and for your own good, without money and without price. Now that's the spirit of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to say that I'm grateful for the assurance that I have had of its truth. It's given me comfort and satisfaction. And I stand here today and praise his name, who is the author of our being, that we are permitted to be his guests in his house today. This morning, with all peace and quiet all around us, and yet in many parts of the world, distress and sorrow and anguish and threat of war, 
disturbances of all kinds. But the people who came out of the world for the gospel's sake and came to the valleys of these mountains in response to the suggestion, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added. And I stand here to bear witness to you that that has been realized by the faithful men and women who have come into this part of the world for the gospel's sake. And I pray that during this conference we may rejoice together, that we may feel the influence that when it possesses us makes us rich and happy. And when the conferences, meetings have been finished and we go to our various homes, I pray that we will have felt that we have been fed the bread of life, that we have lived as our Heavenly Father has desired us to live and devoted our time as he has expected us to do. And then, as real Christians, as real sons and daughters of the living God, let us reach out and try and touch those who have not yet received the blessings that we have received and offer them an opportunity to enjoy what we enjoy. This is the work of the Lord. This is the church of Jesus Christ. The name of the church was given to it by our, heaven, our Heavenly Father. And I don't say that boastfully. I hope nobody will feel here this morning that I am arrogant because of my membership in the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I have no such feeling, but I have a feeling of humility, of gratitude, of thanksgiving for the companionship of such men and women as are here and men and women in the world that I have traveled with and associated with for all these years, many of whom have not been able to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, but I hope for their sakes and for the sake of those that they love that they will eventually receive that blessing. And it'll have to come, if it ever does come, from the author of our being through the inspiration of his spirit. Again I say, this is our Father's work. This is the church of the Lamb of God. We have a responsibility who, have, who know that that no other people in the world have. And if we will be righteous in our lives, having our own homes and our own lives in order, the Spirit of our Heavenly Father will be with us always. And people will rejoice in our companionship. And when we go to the other side, we'll find our names enrolled in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that will entitle us to an internal inheritance in the celestial kingdom, and this earth will be that kingdom. And I bear you witness of it in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.